Hey, what's up guys? So today I want to go over certain techniques to go from this to this. Today I want to talk about something that will be very helpful to beginners working in DaVinci Resolve and especially beginners working in color grading and that is the importance of using a no tree to learn how to grade because one of the biggest issues I have with a lot of beginners who are doing color correction is basically what's known as learning to see. This happens all the time. You look at your video file and it looks great to you. Uh, there seems to be nothing wrong, so you really don't really know what to change. Or if you are changing something, you change the very super basic things like, oh, this image is obviously too dark or it's too bright or it's too yellow or blue at the most. Uh, but you would be surprised how many people see a log image and think there's nothing wrong with it or they don't know where to go, they don't know what to do with it. And so using a note tree is a really great way to visually have reminders of what you could possibly do next. So if, as you see here, I have this kind of pre-made note tree. This is a good basic way to start right here. What I have is, you know, the base grade, the contrast, color temperature, and then some secondary, secondary one, secondary two, secondary three, and then a look adjustment. You could definitely do more of these, but I'd say this is just a great way to start. And I'm gonna show you how to also save these so that you can use them on multiple projects. A lot of professional colors do have these, do save them. For beginners, I would definitely recommend them just to kind of you know get the creative uh, juices flowing, just to kind of start thinking of what you might do next. So with that being said, Let's jump right in. Okay, so here is the image that I'm working on. And you know, you can see this image, it looks nice. You know, a lot of people would look at it and think there's not much wrong with it. But as you all know, color correction is very subjective. And a lot of times what you do to an image is heavily based on the color story. Uh, you know, how does this grade push the story forward? What does the director want? That sort of thing. So for this, the director, they just wants to be, because of the place in the story, they want to be a little bit brighter, more vibrant, warmer, you know, kind of a prettier look um, on this grade. And so that's where you would go from here. You know, it's, you have the objective things that are honestly also subjective. Like some people might see this and I think it's too dark. Some people might look at this file and this clip and think it's too blue. Some might like the darker, moodier look and the bluer look. I'm gonna show you what I did with my no tree here um, and show you the different steps that you can do to create a look. And another thing I wanna cover in this class is also a really important thing when you're a colorist, and that is really the number one skill that you can you, that you probably need to train above anything else, above any of the technical stuff or anything else, is the creative part of learning to see. And what that basically means is, do you look at an image like this and think it looks great? And do you look at an image and that you shoot and think, you know, I don't know what to do with it, it looks fine to me? Or, you know, after a while you develop the eye and you train yourself to see something and see things that other people maybe don't see that don't have experience grading. You see an image and you notice things like, oh, yes, it's too dark, but it's not right for the story. Maybe I want to tweak, you know, the phone here. Maybe I want to make these colors pop. Maybe her skin tone looks a certain way. You start noticing all these little things that will really make the image much better, will push the story forward. And really, I'd say that's really one of the top things that makes a colorist a great colorist, but it's a million little subtle minor adjustments that create huge changes in an image, rather than just making giant global changes like color temperature, exposure, saturation, that you know are big, giant, rough brush strokes, which improve the image, but really you wanna get down to doing the really fine tuning of an image. So, okay, so again, with that idea in mind that I mentioned of wanting this to be brighter, more vibrant, prettier look, let me show you what I did. So the initial adjustment was simply just this base adjustment, uh, which was really just, you know, I did a little bit, if you wanna go down here and see the specifics I did, I just kind of boosted the gamma a little bit and I boosted the gain in this image. There we go, and really that just takes you from here to here, okay? 
And then from there, you know, just to give this a not so contrasty look, you can see it's very contrasty. I basically went in here and adjusted the contrast, lowered it a little bit. So we went from before, after, before, after, just to start kind of bring things out a little bit more. And then here's the first big change. I really pushed the color temperature. You know, I thought a good look for this would be to make it look much warmer than it is because this looks a little too dark and dreary. And there we go. Again, before, after, before, after, little step by steps. And that's what's great about this a no tree that you can kind of just remember, okay, what's my basic adjustments? What do I think about the contrast? What do I think about the color temperature? And then into the secondaries, for those of you who don't know what secondaries are, secondaries are basically the focused adjustments. So, you know, the primaries are these first ones that we did, the base adjustment, the contrast, the color temperature, that affects the entire shot, everything in the shot. The secondaries would be things like, okay, what do I want to do just to her face? What do I want to do just to the window? What do I want to do just to, you know, these other items on her desk? Those would be considered secondaries. Things like keying, putting windows, those are secondary adjustments. So it's always great to have at least two or three secondary nodes so that you can you know, ask yourself, okay, what focused adjustments can I make on this image to make it better? Probably the easiest one that most beginners start with is applying a vignette. It improves it, it's a secondary adjustment, but you wanna start you know, training yourself and your eye to see other things in the image so that you make your shots a lot more interesting and they work a lot better for your story. So the first secondary that I did here was I really boosted this phone because it's really important for the story. I, I That phone is very important. So I wanted to, you know, right now it's just kind of like hiding in the background here. You know, it's not really doing much and I really wanted to bring it out and I added a very... I'm not going to go in too technical in this video, but basically just know that I added a very deep film-like saturation to the phone. So it really is unique. It really stands out and it really has a unique color before, after, before, after. And you can see how the look is building. And then for the, the secondary here, the second secondary, I basically made the blues pop a little bit. There you go. Look at her jacket. Look at the blues on the desk before, after, okay, before, after. And then for the third secondary is the big one. There you go, I wanted, I just basically brought up this part here with one of the OFX and Resolve to really create this pretty soft light that's coming in and just kind of helps answer the question of, you know, this slightly blown out soft skin. She has really light skin. And just by creating that, again, going with the look, a prettier look, a softer look, and I think that kind of added it, and that was simply by using the light rays in DaVinci Resolve. Again, this is a feature for the full studio version. If you have the free version, you wouldn't have this OFX plugin. Uh, but again, just to go over this quickly, I just basically adjusted the threshold for raise direction, I put it at an angle here. And then, you know, just to show you what it does here, you can adjust the angle. Pretty cool. I put it at an angle. I also soften the rays a little bit because you can make them, you know, very hard or very soft. Again, all subjective stuff. And that was basically it. I tweaked, um, you know, the length of them because initially I think they were just very short, kind of like that, almost like a glow on the window, and I made them a little bit longer. And that was it, you know, to create this look that I think really adds the most to it. And then at the end, I just kind of did a look adjustment. I said, you know what, this could probably be even warmer, and I brought up the warmth a little bit more before, after, before, after. And this right here is the final look. If I turn everything off, we started here, and now we're here. And if I go one node at a time, you'll see the base adjustment, contrast, color temperature, initial secondary with the phone, next secondary with the blues, 
Next secondary with the light rays, and then a little bit warmer. And there we go. Okay, so what's the point of me mentioning all this and going step by step and talking about no trees? Is if you're a beginner, or even if you're not, uh, a great way to start is definitely have a no tree that you work with because, like I said before, it'll definitely help you, you know, think through the creative steps that you want to make to make an image a little bit better and not start off with a blank canvas with a single note in Resolve where you don't know what to do with the image. And I think that will slowly train you to think and force you to think about the base adjustment, the contrast, the color temperature. You could add other features in here, like maybe add a sharpness node, things like that. You could create multiple node trees for yourself, maybe one for corporate projects, maybe one for more narrative creative projects, things like that. So that's step one, and I'll show you how to save this. So if I wanna save this node tree here, I have it and I basically just you know created a node, right clicked, node label, and I typed in the name for each one. And then you simply go over here to your power grades, select that, right click, grab still, and then you have that saved there. And then you can always go here, click, name it whatever you want, you know, maybe I'll name this basic node tree, name it whatever you want. And then if you're working on another shot, let's say I go to this one, you could always go to this here, grab that right click, apply grade, and then you can see that that no tree is applied to this entire shot. But you just simply start here and you know you go down the tree and you make adjustments to a shot. And it just kind of helps get you started and to think about what might help this image. So anyway, really it's that simple. This is gonna be a short video. It's just about creating a node tree, saving it to help you be a little bit more creative in your grade. Um, and then in terms of training your eye and learning to see and learning to see things in the image that other people might not to improve those, I would say that really just comes from experience, but this is a good place to start because if you are always thinking of, okay, what's my base look? How can contrast push the story? How can color temperature push the story? How can the sharpness, how can, you know, what secondaries can I adjust? Start breaking the image down. What's this color palette I have? You know, if I look at this here, I have her skin tone, I have blues, I have a lot of, there's obviously some great set dressing here. I have pinks, I have these very light kind of pastel colors, I have light and a darker background and start thinking of that, start breaking down the image and tweaking certain colors, tweaking the exposure, adding things to it to make that a little bit better. And as you do that more often, you'll find that your grades will get better and better. You stop thinking in terms of global adjustments, how most people do, and you start seeing all these things that other people don't see. And that's what really elevates a grade from just basic global to having a ton of other minor adjustments that make a huge, huge difference, okay? So that's it. Hopefully you got something out of that. Any questions, ask below in the comments. Like, subscribe, and I will see y'all later.